My name is Robert Castillo. Whichever pronoun is comfortable for you is comfortable for me. Uh, I grew up in Logan Square and I currently live in Logan Square. Well, I came out as a teenager and luckily I came out uh, at Gacy Playground to a group of friends that I used to be involved with through softball and football. I was one of the playground kids and uh, you know I gradually began to realize that I was gay and you know at some point I took my friends out I believe it was Congress Pizzeria and then I told them and they responded that they already knew and it was cool because we were you know we were friends and it was cool. of educating people about LGBTQIA issues, I think sometimes we have to make it personal. Um, name calling, while it may be cathartic for some, I don't think always accomplishes the goal, but um, I'll relay an experience I had that happened in Aurora, Illinois. There was a protest outside a house member's office against marriage equality. And I was obviously on the opposite side for marriage equality and, you know, we were back and forth with the group, you know, the anti-group. And so at some point, three of us and three of them broke off and we were able to have an intimate conversation. And I relayed to the woman who was against marriage equality. She had two of her daughters with her. And I said, all right, I'm going to ask you a question. I'm not trying to be mean about this, but which daughter do you think should not have the same rights as the other one? Mm. To which she replied, no, they should both have the same rights. And I go, that's exactly my point. I said, I'm somebody's son, and my three brothers have the right to marry, so why shouldn't I? So sometimes I think if we can make the matter relatable, I think maybe it doesn't necessarily crack the door wide open, but it leaves a gap where we can then further educate. But I don't think it's on the onus of LGBTQIA people to necessarily educate people, especially in this day and age of the internet. There's a lot of information available online, but you know sometimes we have to step in and, and correct misinformation well I think there's I think one of the beauties of Logan Square is that we are part of the quilt that I say makes up Logan Square so we're ingrained in every organization within this community you know whether people acknowledge it publicly or not and have been for decades so um, I am out and proud and I've been involved with Unity Park since the mid 90s I mean we have a library dedicated to my late husband um, you can get involved in LSNA. They recognized me and John as community heroes years ago. Uh, they're doing important work. You know, you have other groups, Friends of the Logan Square Library. I mean, there's so many different groups that you can get involved in as an LGBTQ person and contribute to that may not specifically be LGBTQ, but I think it's important to be part of organizations that do community work within Logan Square. Because like I said, we are part of the fabric that makes up Logan Square. Whether people acknowledge that shiny bit of quilt or not, we're here. We have been here, we'll continue to be here, and we're part of this community. I have mixed feelings sometimes about pride. Luckily, I grew up in Logan Square, and my group of friends were supportive. So for me, I have that circle of friends, but not everybody has that. And sometimes during this month, it only makes people who are LGBTQ and are struggling that much more unhappy if they don't have that support network. And so I think for me, pride starts from inside and you have to make it, move it outward. And I, there's still a lot of work to do. People think we've come a long way, but still a lot more work to do. actual pride favorite pride moment is one I was actually just looking back at um, this morning um, my late husband John and I were married in San Francisco one year and we actually came back and rode near the front of the pride parade with a big sign that said thanks California and we had a copy of our marriage license and the crowd was amazing so for me you know being with him celebrating that moment and having maybe 900,000 people cheer us on, I think was one of my, my best pride moments, you know. And John, my late husband, also grew up in Logan Square. And we both came out in Logan Square. So for us, you know, it was important to be out as a couple to do community work here. And, and it's also why I remain out and proud, you know, to this day here in Logan Square. 
one of the cool things that I've been able to do um, to honor John's legacy, um, I've been a member of Unity Park Advisory Council, as was John. That was actually the playground John played in as a kid. Um, he passed away in 2012, and we'd been thinking about some way to commemorate or honor him. So just recently, on June 16th, which is the 34th anniversary of Unity Park's ribbon cutting, we installed a little library that I actually designed and helped fund in his honor. And there's a plaque with his picture and a few little descriptions about his contributions both to Logan Square and to the city. And for me, that's another one of my proud moments. And I'm hoping that, you know, the library will be able to be a valuable, valuable community asset and folks will know that John was here mm -hmm. and that he contributed as an out proud member, you know, of the LGBTQIA community and the Logan Square community. Hey everyone, I'm Natalia McCarthy. I'm the general manager of the Dill Pickle Food Co-op and I'm here to tell you guys a little bit about what pride means to me. As you guys probably don't know this, but I do identify as a bisexual and I have for quite some time now. And um, pride to me is basically a month where we get to celebrate all of the trials and tribulations that our past ancestors and people have basically endured and fought for the many rights that we get to enjoy right now. Um, luckily, I've been in the cooperative world for quite some time right now, um, almost 15 years, and I haven't really received any discrimination against me being a bisexual or part of the LGBTQ community. I feel really lucky that I've been able to work for an organization that promotes diversity and inclusion within uh, the cooperative world and um, yeah pride is just a month for us to celebrate all of the great things that we get to enjoy without kind of hiding in the dark or in the closets um, and I'm actually really amazed by all of the different events um, that have come about over the last years uh, I remember organizing my first pride in Davis almost 10 years ago wow. and to see all of the different events all over the U.S. now has been extremely enlightening and really happy and beautiful to see. Um, but yeah, that's kind of where I am at with Pride, and I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the Pride Month this, this month, and I can't wait for next year. <laughs> well, what does Pride Month mean to me? I guess in order to answer that question, I have to go back to my high school years when I first came out of the closet and how prior to that time I felt so alone in the world because of my sexual orientation um, and having grown up in Inglewood not being able to identify with another male or female who was openly gay I mean to be perfectly honest with you at that time I didn't even know what the term gay truly meant um, so I remember feeling very alone um, and isolated and upon having met my first gay friend I, I discovered a whole new level of identity so if I if I had to sum up what gay pride means to me it's it's identity it's connection it's friendship and ultimately it's family because when I felt when I felt disconnected disconnected from my natural family I felt I found a whole new level of connection um, and purpose with my gay family. So that's what it, Pride Month means to me. Uh, I really enjoy Pride Month every year. I grew up in a very anti-LGBT religion and neither my partner and I um, really feel safe being visibly queer in our hometowns. So we really never take for granted uh, the lives that we live here in Logan Square and Chicago and being able to really like be our true selves here and having a lot of access to LGBT resources and history and knowing lots of friends um, so that's always really important to us and just uh, I always kind of reflect on that during the month of pride as well as um, the history of LGBT people in America and I sort of consider many of them adopted ancestors and try to think about like what what I can learn from previous movements and um, struggles as we continue to push for equality. Um, yeah, and it's just also a time when I often celebrate with a lot of queer friends because many of us have 
uh, overcome some things to like live the lives we're living today. So it's always a kind of a fun, happy month. So happy Pride, everyone. <laughs>